Welcome back to Casual Retro Gamer. I've been shopping again, and this time I've bought a Philips Video Pack Computer G7000. Or, as you folk in the US might call it, a Magnavox Odyssey 2. Odyssey, video game fun, computer keyboard challenge. The entrance to an alternate world of fire-breathing dragons. Hitting sluggers, arcade wizards, outer space wizards. More than 40 games in all. Odyssey, the excitement of a game, the mind of a computer. All for the price of an ordinary video game. Odyssey. Good old Leonard Nimoy. Was there any late 70s, early 80s tech that you didn't put your name to? You were also selling the Philips Laserdisc players of the time. But I suppose Captain Kirk himself, William Shatner, what, he was pushing Big 20s out the door? So, Star Trek and technology, it all goes together, doesn't it? Right, so, our video pack. What is in the box? Well, my particular system came with these three games. Number 6, number 8 and number 39. This one is Freedom Fighters. These two don't say what they are, but we will be able to figure it out in a minute. Nice to have some of the original literature. We get the manual, albeit I'm sure it is pretty straightforward. Plug it in, put the cartridge in, turn it on and away you go. An information on service and guarantee card. I'd say that's probably quite a rare thing to have with these. These type of things generally just get thrown away. And then we have this little brochure showing off some of the games. So, those two other games that we don't know what they are. Number six. 10 pin bowling and basketball. So we now know what that is. And number eight, all the thrills of baseball. So if we can get this Wii machine powered up, at least we now know what the three games are. And yes, this system was sold spurs of repairs and not turning on. Despite that though, the machine itself is in really, really good condition. This silver here is actually painted plastic, it's not moulded silver, and luckily enough for me, there is not a single scratch in it. So we get two joysticks, both of them are exactly the same. Self-centering joystick and single action button. In fact, this is where the only wear can be seen on the machine, on both of them, but more so this one. The paint has wore off our little action button. It does use a 9 pin DIN to connect. I am not sure if it's compatible with the Atari standard. We have our power brick then. It seems to use some sort of proprietary 2 pin connector. It's supposed to be delivering 10 volts at 1.1 amp DC of course. So if this is faulty it should be relatively straightforward to get something to replace it. Let's have a closer look at the machine itself. So the first thing that jumps out about this machine is the keyboard. But I use the term fairly loosely as this thing here has absolutely no feel to it. I wouldn't fancy typing out very much on this. There was a basic cartridge available for this machine and you could do a bit of programming then but yeah. I definitely wouldn't have fancied typing too much on this keyboard. If we can get this machine to work, it will be interesting to see just what that is like in use. Single cartridge slot. And I don't know if you'll be able to see down in there or not on the video, but we can just see the cartridge connector on the bare PCB. I can even see a load of vias in there. So absolutely no protection from spillages or the sort. 
nothing really of any interest then on the front or the sides all the rest of the action happens around the back we get our two nine pin joystick ports and that two pin proprietary power connector video from this machine much like the Atari 2600 that this was released to compete with is via RF now hopefully we will be able to tune this end of the TV down the bottom of the cave but you can also do a composite mod to this which is something that I think is definitely worthwhile having a go at there's even an RGB mod available for this but given the quality of graphics we're talking about personally I think composite which is a lot simpler to do will be perfectly fine let's not get ahead of ourselves though as I said this system was sold spurs or repairs not working not turning on so first things first let's test out this power supply so what we're looking for then is 10 volts DC let's see what it's doing Well, I've obviously got them reversed, but it's putting out 13.85 volts. Might seem a little bit on the high side, but hopefully once we apply a little bit of load to that, that would settle back down a bit. Regardless, I would fully expect all the logic inside our little machine here to be operating at 5 volts and there'll probably be a 7805 voltage regulator in there to bring that 10 or well 13 volts down to 5. Those things normally operate up to around 18 volts or so. So even if this thing is a little bit out of spec it probably is fine. So we could just crack on and test it then but where's the fun in that? Let's take it apart three bolts on the bottom of it and luckily enough this wee multi-tool just seems to fit it nicely is that it it's holding it together it doesn't seem like a lot here doesn't especially at the front Wonder will it be screws underneath his feet? Maybe not. It seems like it's going to come apart. Oh, I was right the first time. The bottom comes off. Ah! I wonder has a little bit of reworking been done in here once upon a time? Certainly evidence of flux on the board here and that is most definitely not factory solder there look at those blobs or in saying that maybe it is because where that capacitor has been added there it's quite a nasty looking blob of solder on that leg as well Now, how do we get this out? Dust bunnies. A few more of these we self tapping bolts by the looks of it. One, two, three, and four. And a little tip that somebody told me once before on another video of mine that has just come back to me there. When removing screws or bolts or whatever from plastic that's been in there for a long time tighten ever so slightly first of all and then it should come out without any risk of cracking the plastic RF modulator just disconnects like so and we have a very very flimsy feeling ribbon cable here which just pulls out 
And there's our board. So we have two voltage regulators here, as I thought there would be. 7833 and a 7836. So is the system running at 3.3 and 3.6 volts then? Not 5 volts, as I had guessed. Let's see if we can get this cam apart. That's better. See if it's skating about and damaging my desk even worse than it is. What in the name of all that is holy is going on here? So around this mess here, these blobs of solder. I don't know if you'll be able to make that out or not on video. But look at the heck of that there. Presumably all of that is meant to be bridged. That is some dodgy looking solder work. And I know that I'm one to speak, but yeah. Did not expect to find the likes of that in there. Our Intel 8048 CPU. I think it's clocked at around 3 megahertz. Is that correct? I'll stick the proper value of it on screen. Presumably ROMs, maybe RAM. There is 1K of RAM on this board and then just an awful lot of logic. What will we do? Will we connect up some power and um, see what's happening? See if we're getting any voltage out at these regulators. So there's our power input, which has settled down to 11.25. And on that regulator, we're getting 5 volts out of it, or, well, 4.94. On the other one then, again, there's our 11 odd volts in, and 5 volts out again. So are they both, are they both uh, 5 volt voltage regulators? I mean... That one definitely says on it, 7833, and the other one is 7836. Hmm. You know what I'll do? I have the schematics for this board. That would be the thing to do, wouldn't it? Let's compare to that. So after checking that service manual, yep, these are meant to be 5 volt regulators. They're actually listed as 7805s in the manual so I have no idea why this one says 7833 and this one says 7836 on it whatever obviously just a part number for that specific 5 volt regulator from whatever manufacturer those are from so what we have here is our CPU as I said this is the video and sound co-processor and this here is our RAM I have the system currently powered on and our RAM is uh, getting kind of hot. The CPU has a little bit of heat in it. This video and sound chip is nice and toasty. And then all the logic is cold. So, I think what I'm going to do here is, well, turn the power off first of all. Let this cool down for a second. We'll pull these three chips since they are in sockets and spray a lot of uh, contact cleaner in there. Also give this cartridge port a really good clean. And then, I think we'll just try it. It might actually work, you know. Thing is, will I be able to get it tuned in to that TV down there? So what you're looking at here is the Atari 2600 hooked up to the TV over RF. Just wanted to do that first of all, just to have the TV tuned in to the console. Hopefully our Philips uses the same frequency. Let's change over to it and let's see if it works. Absolutely nothing. 
Let's try and retune the TV again. This is not looking promising. Nothing. So it looks like our little video pack is faulty after all. Let's take it back to the bench and have another look. So after doing a bit more poking around the board, I have myself pretty much convinced that the system is working. I think though there may be a problem in here where the PAL video encoder is because there's nothing coming out here. That's the connection to the RF modulator. But just to show you what I am talking about. So I have my little scope thing hooked up here. And for example, this chip here that does the video and sound, pin 27 on this is the sound output. Um, if you look at that, that looks like it could be an audio signal to me. Equally, these three pins here, Pins 18, 19 and 20. That is the RGB output. And they're certainly doing something. So, at a guess, I would say there's definitely a video signal coming. Likewise, if we just take a quick look at the RAM. I mean, it is pulsing away there on every single bit on the bus. So, just heating up the iron. We're going to take this can off here and uh, have a closer look at that PAL video encoder chip. Pin five of that should be composite output. So, we'll have a look at it on the scope and see what it's doing. So, I've spent the last couple of hours playing about with this board and Unfortunately, not really getting anywhere fast. Removed this RF shield from here first of all. This is the PAL video encoder chip. And it's pin 5 from this. As I said, it's supposed to give us our composite signal. But uh, no, absolutely nothing there. The pin is just dead. Now, I have been able to go around this and trace most of the signals coming into it. And most of them are there. So looking at the schematic, Starting in the top left there, pin 11, lumen, that's there, looks fine, I'm assuming luminance level. Then working down we have RGB, those are there, trace them across from this chip to here, signals look fine. Then along the bottom there we have BG, CBL and CSY, so not sure what BG is but there is a signal on it pulsing away. CBL composite blanking maybe something like that again yes there is a signal on it csy composite sync i assume and yes there is a signal there and it's reading our 15 kilohertz that you would expect so that is fine problem then seems to come as we work our way up the right hand side there of the schematic with burst then by and ry those three uh, pins which are two three and four are just dead. There's nothing on them whatsoever. Well, when I say it, nothing, there's a signal of like 157 millivolts, which um, when you zoom into it, it just looks like noise, to be honest. So those three signals are generated down in here. So possibly something faulty down in here. Now, there was an awful lot of really dodgy looking soldering going on in particular and behind these two chips. So what I've done just is reflow all that. Well, to be honest with you, I actually removed all the solder and then just redid it. Likewise, while I was down here, I fixed some of those other nasty looking solder blobs that were on the thing. Didn't seem to make any difference though. So short of just replacing these six logic chips here, I seem to be involved in generating uh, the picture, or well, generating that RY burst and BY. I'm a bit lost as to what to do. I did replace capacitors here and down here. 
the old caps, I mean, they looked okay. The only reason I replaced them, to be honest with you, was while reflowing this, there was a bit of a bad smell out of it. So I thought, possibly leaking electrolytic, let's just change them. Didn't make a button of difference though. So if anyone has any bright ideas what I can do to down here to try and test this better or what you think might be going wrong, please let me know in the comments below and we'll certainly try something out. I am totally convinced though that the system is running fine other than this because well if we put our cartridge in up here on this connector to the RF modulator this top pin is the sound out and it's just a line level output so I'm just jury rigged this up here to my speakers and if we power it on it sounds like anyway the system is booting up now I would need to connect the keyboard here to be able to try and start the game to see if we could hear the sound effects of the game running maybe try that in a minute actually but yeah I'm pretty much convinced that all this is working fine the fault is in here somewhere either this is bad but I'm not 100% convinced because those three signals are missing I think there's something down in here giving problems so just to finish up today I have the board back in here and we're hooked up to this keyboard again what I want to do is try and load another cartridge try this one this time uh, number 39 Freedom Fighters after we get that initial power on that sound there I think if we press enter that should load and start the game so yeah it certainly sounds as if the game is running and I think that just goes to confirm that the computer side of this is seemingly working fine the fault is purely on that video output side so I'll have to go away and do a bit more homework on that if anyone else has any ideas what to try please let me know in the comments below but that's it for now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time